Um, an awesome day for these guys, for the program. I cannot say enough about the fans and how they supported. These game times were tough. I was looking at the people down in the, the left field and right field bleachers. I know how hot I was, and I could get in the shade. I see those people fighting for our team relentlessly, hour and hour and hour and hour on end. They add such a touch to this, and it's an advantage. When you're in these situations and you get to do it at home, that's a huge part of it. And having to be the visiting team today added another challenge to things, clearly. And just proud. Like, these guys delivered the result all year. UConn is as tough and well coached as any team that I've coached against. They throw the whole bag of tricks at you. Their defensive abilities, their bunt defenses, the way their pitchers pitch, just phenomenal. Like they're a really, really, really good baseball team all the way around. The game was a grind. When I get into trying to manage the bullpen and think through that, there's parts of the game that become a little bit of a blur for me. His at-bats, having this guy on the mound at the end of the game, and Tibbs said it's over. Like, it's getting to us, this is over. And when you have Whitaker throwing as good as he's thrown, that was as good as he's thrown. Slider command, field down, fastball was down well today. Both sides of the plate, a couple good change-ups. So when you get to that with him was a decision that we were trying to make as this game unfolded. Because there, there was a situation where if this doesn't go well, you're playing tomorrow. So. It's a unique coaching situation because of the, clearly this result, but if this doesn't go your way, how do you try to manage? Because you have another crack at it tomorrow. So there were some really interesting talks Mike and I were having. Micah called a great game. They're scrappy, they're tough. And um, I can't say enough about the quality of, of these two guys. And I think in moments where you're challenged and you get opportunities, the guys that work at it and have character seem to rise to the occasion. And it was really neat that these two happen to get those opportunities. There's not two better human beings that'll sit at any podium, anywhere to go over a game. They're phenomenal. I like to just sit there at the end of that in my time doing this and watch them enjoy it. So if you're gonna ask me why I wasn't running around, I have to do a lot of things that take up my mind and my time and energy. And when I get that opportunity, I want to sit my tail right over there and just soak it in for five minutes. I couldn't be more proud of these players, the assistant coaches. They're prepared because when we sit in here every game and go over what this might look like and what to expect and what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses, what are the analytics, what should we do at the plate, how do we need to try to attack these guys, our assistant coaches have put us in this position. I'm so proud of them. And this was new to Micah and Ty. Like, we lost our assistant coaches. Here these guys come. Brad obviously was with us. But this is new. This is new, uncharted territory. And everybody in the, in the dugout in the program handled this like a champion and how you should and handled their responsibilities and duties. And it's not easy. There's a lot of stuff going through the mind as that, as that game Proceeds. Couldn't be more proud. Take questions, please. James, I'm guessing you, you talked about the mindset going on with that last time at the plate. I mean, I'm sure you're not thinking of home run, or maybe you are thinking of home run. Well, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I sat on the bench and I told the coaches and everybody around us, I said, it's getting to the top, we're, we're, it's done. And I looked at Cantu and I was like, I'm going to end it right here. Um, that was just pure luck. Um, but that was I was just confident I was just hoping that I got a pitch to hit and luckily I was I luckily I did but uh, yeah was it a changeup? I have no idea couldn't tell you what the pitch was I was watching the replay I don't think three is lucky either. <laughs> okay. three bombs. James following up on that you said the other day that you and Hanley talked about this exact moment every day for the last few years yeah. now that it's actually here can you kind of put that in the words especially being the hero or just doing it with this team and what you guys went through last year and know right now. Well, Jaime's one, right? But uh, that's my roommate over there. That's, he's been my roommate for three years. And uh, we've had just as many conversations about that and about these moments and how we wanted to be a part of um, 
the next Omaha team. And, uh, you know, words can't really describe how thankful I am, how, how cool this is. Um, you know, uh, I've been preaching this verse all year, but it's Proverbs 16.9, and, uh, and it says, A man plans his path, but the Lord establishes his steps. And uh, it's been a pretty wild three years. I think we both can attest to that. Uh, but I, I think it's, it, it's perfect. It's exactly how I'd want it to be. So, James, uh, I know uh, the wins, I'm sure, make it easier, even if maybe you're not producing the level you're, you're capable of in the first couple of postseason games. What's it mean after, after kind of the, the slow start to, to have your last postseason game at Halloran? Like <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm thankful we won. I'm thankful we get to go to Omaha. I'm thankful I get to do it with these guys um, for this university. And uh, anything that I do on top of that is just icing on the cake. Coach, um, FSU's first time going to Omaha since 2019. Um, but you've been to Omaha for You went in 2022 to the Free World in North Dame. You went to Omaha uh, to the College World Series as a player here. What does it mean to come back? and take your team uh, to a place that it hasn't been in half a decade? There's five facets of program building and managing the players in the game. And I think about that all the time. And as you move to different programs, different programs need different assets and tweaking to get the roster and the program how you want it constructed and, and playing. So. I reflect on how challenging that is, especially in this day and age. Not, not easy to put it together. We dealt with recruiting. Our morning in that coach's locker room was unlike any recruiting discussions and decisions we had to make this morning. That went on all summer last year, all summer. Then when you flip it to, all right, it's time for fall practice, man, you're trying to grind and help them find the moments and the ways to, to play baseball this way. So there's a lot that goes into it, and I'm proud. It's not easy to go there, not easy. And they execute. We have to put them in the right position and hopefully the right mindset, and we have to have the correct amount of talent to go compete against the teams that you see out here. They have to go execute it and stay within themselves and play the game, and that's how I look at this. Like, I'm so excited for these guys. There's a lot of things that come at you when you're in Omaha. There's a lot of interviews. There's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of people. And I think the first opening weekend in Omaha is right up there with an experience at an NFL Super Bowl playoff type game, the Final Four, Augusta. It's that. And they're going to feel it. And I'm probably more prepared for it now because of what I had to go through in Omaha in 2022. Um, so. That's a lot, but that's what's on my mind. Yeah, I mean, uh, not really. Like, I, I knew I wanted to be back, obviously, with like my brothers, and we've been getting at it after it all year. Um, but no, not really. I knew I needed to get back. I love this university, these coaches, players. Like, I. My main goal is to get back, and there wasn't really another thought in my mind. Connor, uh, Connor I know uh, I think a lot of people probably assumed you were getting held back to the potential game three to start that way. Yes. But how did the conversation start about being available today and maybe kind of having that role? And how do you transition so well? Seems you transition well to being starter to kind of whatever's needed. Yeah, well, I think in my three years here, I've seen quite a bit, and I've been in a lot of roles. So really, for me, it's not like it doesn't really matter to me. I just go out there and try to execute pitches and get out. So. Um, I was hot yesterday, I was hot today, like I was ready to go. Got up and I don't know, around the seventh inning, moved around, was ready to go. Kind of filled the game out how, how it was going. Obviously with another game tomorrow, then who knows, to try to play it out the right way, but it ended in perfect, it's awesome. Question for Connor and Dave. Uh, just, you guys have been here, you guys are holding over some past your team, you've been in previous years before that. Knowing where the team was at this point uh, over the last number of years, and seeing how y'all made history yesterday and y'all rallied together and, and win a game in 12 innings, uh, just talk about that a little bit and you know, finally get into that stage of Omaha and, and uh, point yourself up there with Florida State baseball. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so surreal. And um, I think from the day one when we got here in the fall, you could kind of feel the new vibe and you know, like the culture that we needed here. Um, 
We're, we just have such good chemistry and we love to be around each other, love to compete together, love to compete for our coaches, play for them, play for each other. Um, we just love to be together every single day we are and um, we just want to win at the end of the day. That's all we want to do. We want to win baseball games and win in life and that's what we're doing. James, uh, I mean, the, the reaction from fans when you go out to our field Yeah, it meant the world to me. Uh, this place has uh, given me the opportunity to play the game I love for you know a couple more years and, and allowed me to do it at the highest level and allowed me to be a part of some amazing teams with some amazing guys. And uh, that guy right there, um, I couldn't be more thankful for <laughs> for being able to be here and just being able to be a part of uh, what for, puts Florida State baseball back on the map. And uh, it's been a wild ride, um, but I am, I'll never be able to thank enough people enough times for um, what they've done for me in these three years. Take a last question over here. Coach, I know it's kind of been a calling card the whole year, but this game was so back and forth. Just one last time to talk about your team's response and how they never gave in, even when there was multiple times that they could just rolled over and take it tomorrow. Yes. The personality of the team seemed to be like big inning-ish. And I don't, I don't know if all of our home runs were generated via the, the home run. Were, were they? Close? Yes. Huh? All? Well, it's hard for me to. <laughs> were they? No. Sack fly. Yeah, for Rose Ball, for yeah. Rose, which I actually thought might get out. So you just, like, how teams respond, that seems to be our DNA. and. When people have to pitch to the top, bottom, one to nine of that lineup, I think they tend to pitch carefully. And as a result of that, sometimes you get more mistakes. And you saw that today. There were some, there were some really good at-bats, none, none bigger than what this guy did. But dog, they're really good. Different type team. Like their running game and some of the other things, just two totally different teams. But you can be successful and effective with different dimensions and different personalities. But I think today might have summarized what I see out of our team a lot. And the long ball and the, the strength and the capabilities for the extra base hit is a huge part of what our team does and in baseball in general. That was Kurt. It's felt like for the 11 or has kind of been over this entire season. I guess uh, how much has he been in your thoughts throughout this year and achieving this this year? What's that mean? Well, he means so much, and I think about him all the time. I honestly think sometimes about how would he handle a situation in a game. I thought about the ceremony that this stadium opened up to to start not our season, but it really started the 2024 events here, and. He was a remarkable man, just a father figure, like a second dad to me. And I thought about his management of game and things that came up. It's a different era, things we deal with right now. But you know, I'm, I'm proud of what he helped me learn along the way, on the field and off. And for him now, like there's one more thing that I want to do. And we all know what that is. And this, to me, is a step towards that ultimate quest. And I fought for it as a player. I fought for it and didn't get it done as a coach a couple years ago. The mindset of this team and the approach is to go finish that off and finish it off for him. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you, guys.